Hi everyone, John here. Welcome back to another Boris FX tutorial. This time I'm going to break down how I used Sapphire with Mocha Pro to replace the scenery outside the window in this shot. Okay, so here in After Effects, I'm just going to solo this bottom layer. So this is the original footage and you can see there's an awning outside the window and it's, you know, it's pretty basic, isn't it? It's pretty boring. And if I just unsolo that, you can see what a difference it makes to add some trees in there and, you know, some leaves and some color to the shot. It makes a huge difference. And also, you know, with this volumetric light and a little bit of dust moving around as well. So let's break this down. So on top of that, I have this window replacement comp and this is where all the action happens. So I'm just going to go into this composition and this bottom comp here is named outside and in here, this is where I have the footage. So I've just rotated that so it kind of matches the angle of the window. And you can see I've actually got a couple of different shots in here as well. We'll see how this other one looks in a moment. But once this is set up, you can switch out the shot for any shot. Now at the top here, I have this pale cyan solid. And you can see I've just used a mask here. This is a soft feathered mask just to brighten it up in the bottom right hand corner. And this was to better match the original plate because it was quite bright in that top corner. And there's a bit of bloom there as well. So we'll have a look at that in a moment. So back to window replacement, you can see the outside shot has been cut out. And I've done that using the original plate here. And this has been tracked using Mocha Pro and masked using Mocha Pro. So let's go into that and break that down. So I'm just going to click on Mocha. All right, so there's the window. Just going to use my middle mouse button just to pan that down a little bit. And we've got a few masks here. The first one here is tracked, that's turned off. I'm just gonna turn that back on. So I'm tracking the entire window frame here. You can see, if I just drag, the current time indicator, you can see how that's nicely tracked there. It's a really simple one. I mean, I'm not an expert at Mocha Pro. I really use it for the most basic things. Anything more complicated than I will ask Martin or Ben on the Boris FX team. But this was so easy to do. It's just clicking on the X spline, uh, creating a mask around the window. And all I've done is tracked translation, scale, and rotation and clicked track forward and that tracked that beautifully. So it's a little bit of camera shake in here. And of course I could stabilize this shot, but I wanted to keep the camera shake. So after that, all I did was create new splines around each of the window panes here. And one around this, the wing of this bird, this wooden bird or paper bird. And once they were created, just selecting all of them, just by shift selecting and choosing link to track, track. And as you can see, I haven't had to adjust if I just select any of these, I haven't actually had to adjust any of those splines. They've actually stuck to each of the window frames or each of the panes perfectly. So I haven't had to go in and do individual adjustments. So you can see how linking your roto masks to the track can save so much time in Mocha Pro. Really nice. So we're going to use the mat for these window panes. I don't want to have this one. So that's why that one was turned off. And we're going to use the tracking information as well. So I'm just going to close that up. And back here in After Effects, you can see I have apply mat checked. If I uncheck that, we no longer see the window. And the reason we're seeing the shape of the windows is because I have the stencil alpha blend mode selected. I just turn that off just by choosing normal. There you go. So there's the original tracked footage. And just by using the stencil alpha blend mode, then that will cut through all of the layers below. Doesn't matter about this layer here. This is a null object and it doesn't have any visibility, but it's cutting through the outside footage layer, which means we can now see all those leaves and that beautiful scenery outside the window. Now to that outside layer, you can see I've applied a couple of effects, the curves effect and Sapphire rack defocus. So curves is just to brighten it up, as you can see, and rack defocus just to put it slightly out of focus. And, you know, because it's in the background, I want it to match the original shot a little bit more. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Okay. And also, importantly, 
grabbing that tracking data. So I've applied the tracking data by clicking create track data. I've applied it to the null object. And I prefer to apply my tracking data to a null object because it just leaves the footage layer free of keyframes, which is a bit more flexible. And then simply parent the footage layer to the track. And if we do a preview, you can see how by linking that outside shot to the track null, it's moving perfectly in sync with that shot movement, or that camera shake. Really nice. So that's the window replacement shot. Come back to the main comp. To window replacement, I've applied Sapphire Rays. Just going to turn that off. So that's without, and that's with. You can see that really adds some interest to the shot. It also brightens it up a little bit as well, which is nice. Let's take a quick look at the settings for this. I'm just going to hit U twice on the keyboard. That's going to show me the parameters that have changed. And you can see I haven't really done very much. Let me give myself a little more space here. And let's select the effect. You can see the center XY I've just positioned up here. And that can be really adjusted. That could be over there, you know, depending on where the sun is. It's really quite flexible once this is set up. You can change the look quite dramatically. You can even animate that, of course. And ray length, ray brightness, ray color. Color, just adding a slight blue, obviously because uh, natural light is a little more blue. And a touch of shimmer as well. We're also getting a little bit of shimmer from the leaves, but I've added a little bit of shimmer just to put a little bit of movement in the rays. And you can see I've also chosen matte type alpha. And that's related to this here, matte from layer. I've used this rays matte. Let's just take a quick look at that. If we take a look at the shot as it stands, it's looking pretty realistic. We've got, you know, more rays coming from this brighter area here and less coming from here. If we applied rays directly to the footage, and we didn't use a mat, then because we have brighter leaves, we're going to get rays from the leaves. I'll show you what I mean. So if I just turn off the mat, see how the leaves are starting to project rays? And obviously that doesn't look realistic. So we need the rays to come from the area around the leaves and not from the leaves themselves. It looks okay here, but this doesn't look very realistic. So what I did was I created a separate matte layer. So it's just a duplicate of the window replacement layer, but I've used BCC's Primat Studio just to key out the leaves. And then by using that as a matte for rays, let's turn this off again, and choose matte for layer, rays matte. Now we're getting rays from these areas and we're not getting rays from the leaves. And that's why I also chose alpha matte type, not luma matte type. So here's what we have so far, and it's looking good, but there is a slight problem. If we come back and take a look at the actual effect, let's select S rays. Here's the ray center point, the center XY point. And if I just drag the time indicator, notice how the windows are moving because of the camera shake, but the center point for the rays isn't moving. And what that means is that the rays themselves are actually moving. We don't want that. We want the rays to be locked with the window movement so that everything, you know, moves all at once, all together. So how do we do that? Well, we can actually use what we've already created with the Mocha track. So I'm going to go back into Windows Replacement and select that and just go into Mocha again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to export the track I've already done and import it into Sapphire Rays and use it to control where that point is. So all I have to do is go File, Export Project, and I've already done it before, called it Windows 01 or Window 01. Place that, close that up, and come back to the main comp, and click on Edit Mocha, and there's my track point. 
you can see my search area and the center point. And what I'm going to do is rather than you know trying to track this, this wouldn't track very well anyway. I'd have to track the original footage. But I don't need to because all I have to do is choose File, Merge Project, and then just grab that. And if we just come down, you can see there's my track. I'm just going to turn that on. There's a the track there. So all I have to do is link my center to the track like that. And if we just zoom in a little bit, you can see, see how the center point is locked in now? Really nice. So we can use that and not have to do any extra work. So what I'm going to do is I'll just leave all those turned on. It's fine. I'm going to click Save. And now at the moment, you can see it's changed how the actual rays look. So what we want to do is come into Mocha and we want to bypass Mocha like that. But I do want to use uh, this one here, Center Uses Mocha. So we have a little preview now. So now those rays are locked in with the window movement, which makes it look more realistic. One thing to keep in mind, and it can be a bit confusing, is that with the layer selected and the effects selected, the actual point here, the center XY point in the uh, preview, doesn't move. See that? When we have center users Mocha selected, Mocha is providing the position data for center, but it doesn't change the point here in the UI. So you can think, oh, maybe it's not working, but it actually is. So you can see how with that preview, how that is no longer shifting or changing angle. We are still getting the shimmer in it, but we're not getting the angle change because it's locked in with that uh, camera movement, that camera shake, which is really nice. All right, so I'm gonna turn that back on, turn that back on. Everything's looking pretty good. Next, I just want to show you how I use the Sapphire dust effect, just to add a little bit of dust in here as well. So I'm going to turn that on. Now, we already have a couple of tutorials that dive deep into how to use dust. So this won't be uh, you know, a deep explanation. I'll just show you what I did to create this look. So we've got a little bit of dust, and it's, it's mostly visible inside the rays. I'm going to hide the footage. So there you can see it there. It actually looks pretty nice, doesn't it? The way the dust is moving around in those rays. And once again, I'm going to press U twice just to reveal what's changed. And let's see. The key thing really here that I wanted to talk about is, we can't see it there, we come down to here, is the point masking. So I'm using the brightness And I'm using, as a mat, the Windows Replacement layer. So we're seeing the dust only in the brightest areas of the Windows Replacement layer, which is being used as a mat. And if I just come back, and I'm going to turn this back on. Just view those change parameters again. So there's very little drift in this. I think it looked a bit weird if there was lots of drift because that would mean that there's lots of you know air moving around in the room, which I don't think would be the case. So a little bit of subtle drift and a tiny bit of turbulence just to move it around. I really wanted them to be most obvious kind of in the, in the foreground here. And we can adjust this a little bit by changing the near plane. You can see near plane is set to eight. Now I can actually bring that right down to zero and you can see how we can start to see larger ones closer to us. If I could do that, I could bring that down and I could also adjust the near plane fade. If I bring that right down, you can start to see we look like we're underwater or in space or something, which looks a bit weird. If I want to knock those back a bit, I can increase the near plane fade and just knock that back a bit. So. We're seeing a few more closer to us, but by increasing the near plane fade, we're just fading them out slightly. And this is all explained in the Understanding S-Dust tutorial. And notice also that I've added a little bit of flicker as well, because the volumetric light remember has a bit of flicker as well. 
So if the dust is also flickering, it just looks as if the dust is you know, moving within that volumetric light. Occasionally it moves into an area where there's not really that much light, so it goes dark. And then when it moves again and goes bright, it feels like it's moving into a brighter area of that light. And the only other thing I did with the dust layer was just to copy and paste the Mocha Track Null into this comp. And you can see it up here. And just select the dust layer and just parent it to the Mocha Track. If I just zoom out here, you can see as I drag the time indicator, you see how the edges of that dust layer just shift around because they're now connected or linked to that null. And that just means that the dust is going to shift with the camera shake as well. So it's going to be you know, in sync with that or locked into that movement. And it's not a big thing because the dust is moving around anyway, but just to keep everything consistent because we have the footage and the rays. So why not just use that track and have the dust tracked in as well. I did talk about making this area a bit brighter earlier in the tutorial. And let me just turn off everything else except the original plate. You can see how we're getting that bit of bloom there. It's quite bright. This, this part is actually you know quite bright. I mean, it's bright there too as well, but you really notice it in this shaded area, this shadow. You see it's quite blue and um, you know glowing. So inside the window replacement, when I didn't have, actually inside the outside comp, when I didn't have that turned on, come back to the main comp and just turn this back on. See how it's a little dull in here? And I just felt that that didn't really match what I was seeing here as well. So it had to be a little bit more blown out. I'm just going to undo that. And it's still not quite as bright, but definitely probably bright enough just to sell that a little bit better. I mean, I could, you know, use an adjustment layer maybe with a little bit of Sapphire Ultra Glow. Drop a bit of Ultra Glow in there. And, you know, just maybe, you wouldn't want the whole thing, obviously. It looks like there's some kind of aliens arrived outside. But maybe sort of, you know, mask that off and feather it. Kind of like that. Maybe just make it a little blue. And bring a bit of blue in there. And we have to do some tweaking, you know, increase the threshold. Maybe like that. And, you know, further integrate that into the scene. You can see how that's adding a bit more, a bit more bloom in there, but it's just helping that sit a little, even a little bit better. So that's definitely one option. And last but not least, coming back here and just testing out other options. There's some more green leaves. Sit perfectly in the Windows replacement. And there we go. So everything's all set up and ready to go. So you could set this all up, have a few different you know, outdoor scenes and show your client and you know, they could decide which one they like the best. This one's nice because it adds a bit more green in there. But um, I did prefer the, the yellow one because uh, it just seemed to match the scene a little bit better, I thought. And also the size of the leaves was um, a little smaller. Remember also that I used a little bit of Sapphire Rack Defocus on there just to put them a little bit out of focus, which made that look um, even more realistic. If you have any questions or would like to see anything in more detail, just leave a comment. If you'd like to learn more about Sapphire and Mocha Pro and the entire Boris FX suite, visit borisfx.com where you can also download a trial version. For now, this is John. I'll see you in the next tutorial.